Welcome back to this week's episode of Mystery Garage. Now, I do apologize. We've been waiting on for quite a while now on some parts for this build. Uh, I'm still waiting on a good chunk of them. However, we do have some, so let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. to this week's episode. Now, uh, for those of you guys who've been keeping up with this build, this is our 2.0 ABA swap Mark 1 that we've been working on uh, a couple episodes now, but hot rodding up. Uh, the eight valve, the two liter cross flow version specifically, uh, crossing between the Mark 3 and Mark 4 parts, as well as throwing some aftermarket hot rodded stuff at it as well. And we hope to make some decent power gains for the 2.0. It is an extremely reliable motor um, and so having said that, it is a great swap option for a lot of people. You don't necessarily need to go straight to uh, a VR6 or a 18T. The two liter still, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this uh, group of episodes to show you that this motor still does have uh, a great deal of benefits, uh, not only reliability, but you can make some decent power with these cars as well. So um, in today's episode, I am still waiting on quite a few parts to finish up the very top end part of the motor, uh, but we did get some uh, parts that we can move along with some of it today. So let's jump right into that. But part of the downside about running a consistent YouTube channel is you are at the mercy, mercy of uh, parts delivery. And in this case, because I ordered such a whack load of parts at the same time, partially my fault, partially some of the weather conditions in my area, as well as the timing of the year being around Christmas time, parts are slowly moving. It's been about three weeks now and we're getting very close. Some of it is still in Toronto, uh, which is the center of our country and moving westward. So I hope to get it by the end of uh, this week, which should be uh, able to put up the completion episode next week. But in today's episode, I just want to show you guys, guys kind of what we got going on here. Um, so I talked about these are the Mark IV lifters that are going to go into this engine because they are a little bit lighter than the Mark III ABAs. Uh, we have the aftermarket uh, 370, or, sorry, 276 cam. Um, got, we have a new timing belt. Obviously, we have the uh, two liter eight valve chip from TT that we're going to throw in there that actually raises the rev limit uh, to 7,500. A um, couple other bits. We're going to get a new air filter, but that's just the one I've been playing with so far. Talking about some of the intake uh, piping and tubing that we're going to be working with, as well as the idle stabilizer valve. Some of the gaskets that I have received. I got some new spark plugs, a couple other things like that. And I showed you guys a bit of a teaser. Uh, and big thanks to Eric, a local guy in my, in my neighborhood. And I'll throw a link up to his Instagram here. But he came out and polished this intake up for me and did a fantastic job. Uh, I am going to keep this engine bay pretty low key and some of you guys thought that I painted it but it was actually the reflection of under the hood on top of the intake um, that kind of gave you the idea that it looked in my Instagram post uh, or even the post on YouTube that it was a paint matched intake but we've actually gone with polished. It will be the only thing in the engine bay that's polished. Everything else I'd like to kind of black out. I am looking at deleting uh, the overflow bottle from the 2 liter. Reason why is this is the Scirocco style. Um, early tanked version of the radiator so i actually don't need that because these are kind of the same thing so we're going to try and figure out a way to delete that the one challenge is the port on the back of the intake for the coolant line you don't really want to block that off um, so i'm going to try and find another way to flow that so it constantly has flow um, blocking things off or deadheading it isn't the right way to go but then we can definitely delete this and not have to worry about it anymore which will really clean up this side of the engine bay so i'm looking forward to that anyways moving forward uh, some of the comments in the last episode, guys, and I understand a lot of you were kind of saying, hey, it's not a great idea to have your intake right behind, because I had the intake filter right here, right behind the fan, because you're going to take the hot air from the radiator and blow it directly into your intake, so you're basically ingesting hot air. I knew that. I just was laying it out for layout purposes. That's why it was the mock-up episode. So what I did do is, local to my area, I was able to find a bunch of pipes. Now let me lay this out on the counter real quick and we'll get come right back to it. All right, so very inexpensively I found a marketplace ad of somebody who was selling a bunch of mismatched uh, cold air intake systems. And because this is gonna be a one-off setup, um, 
I kind of bought them as a group purchase. I think I paid about 80 bucks for them, um, which is fairly, you know, I could have mandrel bent all this stuff, but I don't have the tooling for that. And this was a really inexpensive way to go about it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the certain bends and curves and build my old cold air intake. Maybe we might even get in uh, at that in today's episode. But my intention here is, is to come off of the intake uh, somewhere up here where it was, come down and kind of go in this area right here, uh, below the fan, below the radiator, and have the uh, air sucking up from underneath and maybe put some sort of uh, catch that curves some of the cold air from under the car up into the intake uh, without having it too low to suck any water in. It will be kind of mid-mounted right about here. Uh, what I will do though, is I'm gonna mark out those pipes, kind of clock them, send them to a friend to weld them together so it's more or less one piece, and then we're gonna black it out so you won't really see it. And the idea is to kind of hug that uh, engine cover and kind of keep it uh, kind of hidden and as well as the uh, filter itself will hopefully be kind of hidden out of the eyes view I might even put a bit of a heat shield on top to hide it and to keep the hot air of the engine bay off the filter So we'll see how that goes But that's my intention with those pipes there and one of the other cool parts we did receive today is in this box So let me pull it out for you real quick All right, here we are. So probably my favorite part of this build is this long tube mark one uh, tall deck race header uh, this thing is spectacular. It's from TT. I picked it up and it is a equal length uh, four into one Long tube brace header now you can see the original th uh, part that we pulled out everything groups up into these two um, Into the downpipe and then goes down in uh, what I can imagine is probably a One and five eighths ish size um, But what you're gonna see here give or take is you're gonna see a one and one and five eighths size for each individual runner um, all the way back down to over here, which I believe is about a two and a quarter. Uh, you're going to have this flex bend. This whole thing is manufactured, from what I understand, in-house at TT. This is a fantastic product. Super excited to get this on the car. This is going to definitely help out the mid to top range power of this car. Long tube race headers are great for that. Uh, you're going to want to check your you know, smog abilities in the area because a lot of these things are kind of road race only, at least they say that. Um, as far as this goes, <laughs> this setup obviously aged a lot smaller, a lot more restrictive. This is really going to help out flow and man should ever make a cool difference. Um, this TT version is quite robust. What you're going to see in a lot of the cheap headers is that it doesn't have this linking piece. So some of them uh, heat and time, they start to stress and flex a little bit and then they don't line up properly anymore. This is a really, really cool piece. But before I start handling this too much, I actually want to throw some uh, paint on it. Then we're going to start playing with trying to get it in the car. As you can probably see here, and hopefully the lighting is good for you guys, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get it up and onto these exhaust studs. So uh, what I'm going to do, I might have to remove that um, drive shaft because it obviously it's right in the way. Taking that drive shaft out of the way will help free up a lot of room to just get all the wiggling and everything um, organized. Now, one of the things it does say on the website that you guys should be conscious of is this because of the four into one setup under here, it's not really too conducive with having a sway bar, um, especially the factory one. You can modify your sway bar setup to still work with this, um, but this car actually doesn't have a sway bar currently, so we're not gonna run into that problem, but you definitely would if you were trying to throw down that long tube race header style into a car that did have a sway bar. The other thing to remember uh, with this whole setup too is that this one is made for the tall deck and they make sure that they mark that there so that they don't mistake. And this is for the two liter tall block option. So it's got extra length in these down tubes to account for the deck height on uh, these two liter ABAs. So uh, that's the perfect exhaust system for this car. Perfect exhaust system go with what we're trying to achieve with this build as well. Um, but like I said, before I go and start handling this, I got some high heat exhaust paint that I've used quite a few times that I really like. Um, depending on your guys' area, you may not have access to this stuff, but um, this VHT flame proof stuff is made for headers. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's got a little bit of ceramics in it that's gonna stop this header from rusting. If I went and threw this on, or I handled it with my greasy hands too much, within one or two starts of this motor and heat cycles, it's gonna start to rust up or oxidize a little bit. So uh, throwing this paint on will prolong that for sure. Um, it might even prevent rust from ever forming. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it before I touch it too much. I'm gonna prep it for paint, paint it, let it dry, and then as we're, uh, you know, once it's dry, I'm gonna start trying to test fit it in the car and see what we need to do. So let's uh, 
go into the time lapse. Let's get this thing painted up. Okay, so while that first coat tacks up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that drive shaft just to get out of the way, give us that extra bit of wiggle room when it comes time to throwing this thing in. First off, we're gonna pop off this tire and get to work pulling it out. All right, drive shaft's out, and hopefully that's enough room there. Second coat's on the header. We're just gonna let that dry really quick. Um, should take about 45 minutes to an hour for it to set, and then we should be able to put it in. You can see right here, uh, obviously the studs are in. Um, always wanna get new nuts every single time, because these are, as you can see, they're a little bit oblong. Uh, these copper nuts are used once. So I uh, got new nuts, new gaskets. Go ahead and throw that in, and then we gotta worry about afterwards but how we're gonna tie it into the exhaust system. Now, since this exhaust system is also a TT, it should made up pretty quick, but with the old system, I made this little adapter. Uh, I may have to hack that off, or uh, we'll see kind of how it mates once we get it in the car. Uh, if I have to modify anything, I'll be modifying the mid pipe rather than the header itself. And so, as you guys can see, we climb under here. Hopefully you guys can see where we're going here. There we are, got tons of access under there. You can see the blue hood up there. Um, should be able to clean those off real quick with some scotch Bright, and we'll go ahead, throw the gaskets on, get ready to throw the header in. Let's do it. Time to show you this, and sorry I'm losing my voice for some reason, but I am pumped on how this is turning out. Let me show you uh, how it looks. So there you go, you can see the uh, four into one. It's crazy to think that pretty much one of these tubes is basically the size of that. Uh, granted, it's a, this is a little bigger, but it's pretty close. Um, to have four into one like that, that, this is awesome. Now underneath the car, which is even better, there's no clearance issues. You can't, you can't even see the header there. But if you look under a little bit farther, there it is. Uh, let me see if I can get a better look at it for you guys. There you go. And actually I got it to mate up perfectly with that exhaust. I needed to nip off about an inch of the uh, collector at the end of the header before it got to the flex. But it ended up working out real nice. This thing fits really, really well. Super happy. Let me see if I can show you the fitment where it made it up right there. You can see Actually, that slip I modified earlier worked perfectly there. So I'll probably put a little slip connector on there to keep that sealed up. But man, this is impressive. Love it. 
So I've obviously felt all around. There's not a single clearance issue. There's nice air gaps all the way around. Um, you know, brand new nuts on there. Everything's looking real sharp. Super pumped on that. Now, looking through the uh, where the drive shaft goes, that, that pretty much would have been impossible to do uh, or to put in without removing the drive shaft. Uh, in case anybody's going to do the same header before, but you can see the clearance there uh, to get the header in in the first place. Oh, I got some grease on. I got to whip that off. Um, but getting the header in there in the first place wouldn't have been possible with the drive shaft in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it into time lapse and throw the drive shaft back in. on this so now it's finally uh one in one and five eighths uh down to the collector collector and it's two and a quarter all the way back there's no more uh, there used to be a little bit of restrictions of size difference variation with the old exhaust now it's straight through two and a quarter right to the back so that leaves me with everything underneath the car basically done for now uh, as far as the engine mods go we're going to go ahead and tackle in next episode we're going to go ahead and start working on putting all this back together i'm just waiting on a few more gaskets and my injectors and a couple other things that is preventing me from going any farther on the top end of this engine i really wish i could keep going i really want to keep going but it looks like the next shipment's only about a couple days away so by next episode guys we will get the top end of this engine completely put together fire this thing up because now with this new exhaust as well as all the new treats we're throwing at this engine i really really want to fire this thing up and shortly thereafter i think we're probably going to end up doing a brake upgrade on the front as you guys can see these are non-vented in the front it would be really nice to put another brake upgrade probably go Corrado 11s or something in the front um and then this car should be ready to hit the road uh or actually probably go into storage for the till the spring and then hit the road in the spring but thank you guys very much for watching i really do appreciate it and if you guys like this kind of content highly recommend you subscribe to this channel because the next episode is just a few days away uh so is christmas too so uh i'll get the set next episode out before christmas and uh happy holidays to the rest of you guys and we'll see you soon on the next episode until then take care